up, everybody. Welcome to another opinion field episode of Opinionated with me, Cynthia Zondezu, and of course, with my girl mm-hmm, from the set. Theo. And down here, we've got <laughs> the most handsome man of Zonse Life. My name is Jalito oh, Mizan. Oh, Lord. Let's not do oh, this. Wow. Let's not do this, bro. <laughs> Jealousy <laughs> will hurt you, guys. No, it's okay. Yeah. That is yourself. There you go. (laughs) All right, guys, we've got uh, a few topics lined up for you today. And first on the list, uh, Mr. Kelke and Take Green recently released a music video titled Nakopenda. Everybody rock with it, rock with it, rock. Okay, first of all, we're going to start from the title of the song itself, Nakupenda, which leads to the question of the main topic itself is, uh, why are our Malawian artists using other countries' vernacular languages uh, to, you know, uh, release their songs or just like, in general, uh, write their songs and sing their songs in. When, uh, yes, I get that music is an international, you know, mm-hmm. language and all. Uh, we've seen South Africans, they thrive on their languages, you know, Zulu, Tosa, you name it. We've got uh, the likes of Saudi Soul, they mostly sing in Swahili. And he, yet here, our very own Malawi is Kelke and Tegun recently released a song that was sung in Swahili and Zulu. What do you guys feel about that? <laughs> now uh, you wanna start? Nah, man, I'll start. I think, I think they're trying to break the borders. Like, I think that's why. Um, because it's a song that will probably resonate to people who are listening to things of that. Oh, it's, it's a song that will resonate to the people who speak Swahili. You know, and so it also resonated to the people who speak Chijewa and stuff. I get the argument, Woody, the Malawian went not push Chijewa and stuff like that, but I think they've reached a level in their career where they want to break the borders, break the boundaries, especially uh, Kels. Because I know Tay Green has already, I don't know how his market share is in SA, but like SA artists know him and the entertainment scene in SA, Agamam Vazau Malawi, they probably say Gemini and Tay Green here. So for for Kells, I think that's new ground for him, uh, which is pretty dope to see them doing that. And also, I think the song will premiere on Trace Africa. The video will premiere on Trace Africa. He's actually selling the song. So the song is not out for free download. So you can see it's strategic how they're trying to position the song. Even the video is going to Trace Africa. If it's on Trace Africa, Tanzanians pick it up, Kenyans pick it up, and now... He now has a new market share. So I understand that aspect. But the Chichewa uh, argument is also fair to say, like, bro, are you selling yourself mm-hmm. short? Mm-hmm. On the other side, um, we can also say Woody Kells has already, uh, what's the word? He's, he, he's, he's earned his stripes. He does most of his songs are in Chichewa already. So he's already earned his Chichewa stripes. And so... If it's up to me, I can, I can allow him to get away with this one. I'm just saying. Okay, let me quickly jump on that before you feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you say that yeah, you get ahead. that they're trying to break borders, yeah? yeah but yeah. we've seen other African artists that have been able to break borders while doing music in their own vernacular language. For mm-hmm. example, Jerusalem, we all know that it's hit over 100 million views. Everybody is yeah. saying it. And I'm pretty sure there are other people that don't know what they're saying, but they're still yeah. in love with and we've seen other African artists that have forever sang in their languages, now, despite the fact that we don't get to hear what they're saying, but we're still in love with it. And that's where uh, music is a universal language comes in. So uh-huh. do they have to actually do their music in another African languages, another African vernacular language for them to be able to break the barrier? I think Can it's kind of hard. Can I on that? Okay, yeah, you go. <laughs> Because I think, 
I like that idea. I get the argument for let's do to show and I get what you the point you're trying to uh, or the question you're trying to say of like breaking the borders with your vernacular. But let's mm-hmm. be real. There's a lot of Malawian artists that are singing in English. Is that mm-hmm. our language? You know, can we claim English as ours? And when their songs go out, like then do we fault them for singing in English? So I I feel like honestly, people are just getting their knickers in a twist for nothing. Because the thing is, it's it's they they've decided to express themselves in this way. And sure, they've chosen a form. Maybe we would have loved it more if they chose maybe not Jijewa, but Jumbuga or Donga or something like that that's from Malawi. Mm-hmm. That would have carried weight with us Malawians would have been like, oh, yes, our people are, you know, exploring other languages. But also, I don't see why it's that big of an issue that they've decided, oh, Swahili is what we're going to go with. And true, yeah. they're trying to break borders. But if they had sang in English, would we have the same argument that they're trying mm-hmm. to break borders sure but they're doing it in english they should do it in jail how come we've never actually faulted anybody for singing in english which is just yeah. my take also like just to answer cynthia uh with the whole jerusalem craze and everything guys we're malawi not many people in africa speak to jail wow so africa is already a very big economy uh, the language and Vaza people like overseas outside Africa, whenever they're talking about Africa and the languages that are spoken in Africa, it's usually Ajina Zulu, Osa, it's never Jijewa. You know what I'm saying? So it's easier for someone who's outside Africa to like, yo, what, what's that? That's Zulu stuff? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you hear it in like American movies, like, uh, and, and like Craig just released an album. It's never the actual Zulu languages, by the way, but anyway. I know, I know, I know. Uh, but like, it's easier for a South African artist like uh, Master KG to break, uh, to break through like he has because of the economy he's coming from. It's harder for us because of the economy we're coming from. They have a stable music industry. And you'd be surprised to know that like Master KG is actually being pushed by Warner Music in France. You know, his song is like number one on the charts in France, in like Germany, Italy and all that stuff because there's a, a record label that's actually pushing him <laughs> in those countries. We don't have that luxury here, you know. Uh, I tried one time just like doing my research to see Woody, how can an a Malawian artist break in SA and there's a lot of money you'd have to spend to actually, actua- to actually break through in SA uh, by like paying PR guys you know, uh, going on a radio run, uh, getting your, your song playlisted on radio and TV. That's a lot of work. You know, we don't, lots of Malawian artists do not even know what doing a PR run is. I, I work with Zonsa Live, Wafusa, press release, Samid Wafusa, what's that? You know, but that's like the simplest form of trying to release a song, you know? And so, Nginyadi, it's, I, I understand where these guys are. Uh, are heading to and why Kales would take that route. I'm not sure if that's what he initially wanted, but like I would really, I would, I would cut him some slack uh, to say he's engaged with Swahili because he wants to break from away from Malawi, like still maintain his fan base in Malawi, but also like, you know, attach himself in like other markets. Okay. All right. Well, it's only our opinions as three. So I'm yep. just gonna, uh, you know, push forward the question to the people that are watching this as well. So that would like to get feedback from them and hear what they have to say, their two cents on Kelke and Tegri releasing a new track slash video in Swahili and Zulu. Do you guys love can it? I, what do you guys think about it? Yeah? Can I ask that? Do you think that this whole thing, cause I've seen like quite a few people, like when I remember when the snippets of the videos uh, started uh, circulating on social media like a couple of people mentioned that of like oh why are you singing in in you know languages that are not malawian and now my question is is this a big issue because of tay green because tay green is the, is the most controversial between the two and the one who's criticized about literally everything he does like right now on twitter tay green can just post a high and people will have an issue with that high and will you know there'll always be and so now my question is like if kelke had done this with suffix or had done this with guamba 
would we would it have the same reaction towards the language thing or would we all just say oh it's a bop you know like is it yeah. the association because we're used to you know i think it is i really i think it is and i mean it's tagrin guys i was actually funny story <laughs> i was at the video shoot for this song i, I didn't oh. stay long cuz the the zonsi life team was shooting the behind the scenes so we're starting a new show called behind the scenes so we got music video sets and then just like take behind the scenes interview the directors and the guys involved so like it was a, it's a, it's a, it was a really fancy shoot like uh, the my, i wouldn't want to call them alistas from from malawi or whatever but like kunali and hodi and hoche na and hoje is a boy you know and it's a tay green shoot guys you could feel it that tay is here he he's a fun of jendi say about no gates like love him on page tay green is a celebrity and wherever he goes he commands attention even though he doesn't seek it and so mm-hmm. i think it's caused such a tension because tay is, is fissured on it and now it's like it's, he's always the center of attraction like uh, he's probably people will think the title is nagobenda and the song is swahili because of tay's influence also and i mean i don't think they'll come up to come out to say yeah you know it's actually kk songs it's kk song but like Um there's nothing so I just publicity right Yeah no <laughs> there is not <laughs> <laughs> All right okay talking of okay, okay he just recently got engaged I saw I saw a video I saw a video of him dancing was, Off the was, market It was interesting to see him dance Yeah I can't think of it I've never really seen him dance You see what I'm saying? Like the question I had though, why didn't they go like the okay, maybe I wasn't there, so I can't really speak on it. Maybe they did. But like they didn't mm-hmm. walk in or dance in with his song. It was it was like a Nigerian mm-hmm. song or something. I was like, ah, what's going on here? But I wasn't there, so they <laughs> might have played they might have played his songs at some point. But you never know. Mm. Yeah, true. No, I mean, you would really think him being you know a person that sang a lot of love songs you yeah. maybe I, i wasn't there either i don't know maybe the people that went would be able to tell us on how and it also, went down if he if he got to perform for his wife to be as well but also it's kind of cliche but yeah? also i think i f- i feel like there's there's going to like let's be honest if he actually like walked in or danced in with one of his songs Y'all could have come out and say I don't know how Malayans operate. Don't come out and say oh how self-centered of him. Look at him going in with his own music. Hey yari. We know how y'all roll. We know how y'all do. Y'all wouldn't have appreciated the guy for using his own music. Y'all would have criticized him and said no, he's being so self-centered. Oh narcissist and all of that stuff because he used his own song. So I that's think true. he played it safe and I think that's why I don't fault the guy. <laughs> <laughs> and of course uh i don't know out of out of line but because he was already on the story as well with charisma and uh toast because charisma was in the what do you call it do you call it a bridal party when it comes to the guys i don't yeah, know yeah, it's a, a, like damn it yeah yeah, yeah. so um you know these guys were you know all dressed up and they were all wearing white air forces and mikozi being mikozi literally took a picture of charisma who was wearing air forces that probably looked like toast and saying that I charisma that. as <laughs> yeah but anyway that is malawian entertainment for you wishing them all you know the best you know what's funny like, uh, you know what's funny though i'm going to i'm going to say this i've never really said this publicly you know what's funny is the fact that mikozi would do something like that and you find charisma and the guy who owns me goes his name is excess and i saw pictures of them hanging out like Together. right after you know yeah. what i'm saying but yeah. if we posted something like that oof <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> i mean <laughs> can i play devil's advocate <laughs> like, it's happened before I mean, though like for example is it like like if you have like when you have a friend eh, like mm-hmm. say a friend makes a joke about you and like mm-hmm. something personal 
you might be able to laugh it out because they're a friend. Someone you don't know makes the exact same joke. You're gonna get pissed. So <laughs> maybe, I get that. maybe. I'm not get saying that. that's what it is. I get that. Maybe that's how I get they're that. rolling. Of like, they it's can just, make jokes, about them, but nobody else can make jokes about them. It's one incident of many though. Which to me, I'm, so we end up looking like the haters now. I'm like, guys, it's the entertainment industry. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no beef. It's not personal. None of this is personal. It's, it's like just we had a show. We had a show called Disarrated. Yo, that thing, that thing, <laughs> guys. Yeah. It was, hey, guys, I got blocked. All right, got... all right, guys, 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 guys. Okay, we've got so many other things to talk about. We can dwell on this topic for the longest time. But like I was saying, all the best with LK. Um, that was the what's traditional wedding, and then they'll have the proper wedding. Looking yeah. Looking forward to that. And still on the topic of marriage, guys, Dr. Ray and his wife Nicole. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So she, they're getting divorced. So she's asked for a monthly, um, what? Uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Also support. Support of two million. Million. I'm actually trying to. Dollars. I'm trying to pull up the picture so that I can like read through proper words. <laughs> I, yeah, I, this has been like a very interesting story. Like the minute I saw that, I went back and like tried to. Because my first question was, how long have they been married for her to have the confidence to say, "Pay me up like two million dollars a month"? And they've been married for almost twenty-four years, guys. Like that's, you know. So uh, they've been married for long, but also this woman has, like, she studied law. She's a lawyer by profession. So I feel like Dr. Dre should have seen this coming, that if they were going to get a divorce, she would know how to work her way around getting, you know, some of what he's got. Because, like, by the end of last year, he, um, his net worth was, like, $950 million. So but he's, like, you know, you that know they, on the... They signed the prenup, mm-hmm. right? You know that, right? But then, with that whole prenup story, is that she's refusing. She says, Goody, she never actually signed any prenup. Like, there was a prenup that was discussed, but she actually never signed it. So, which no, means she that says, prenup may she not says, be in effect? No, I saw Goody, she says, Goody, she signed it. But, later on, he apologized for making her sign it. And he, he, he supposedly uh, tore it apart. Tore it up? Not knowing that he has <laughs> other copies. <laughs> You know, so wow. so it's she's she's bit. going to court to say, Woody, the prenup was signed under the influence of like Dre and Goody Bassi. She was threatened to sign it, and then yeah. he also he also came out to say, Woody, he had uh tore it up, so that's like false pretense from him. So she's trying to lo- use all these, and I'm not saying this because I'm a guy, these are the facts of the case, okay? Please understand that before you come on. <laughs> These are the facts of the case. But two million, I'm reading this thing. It says uh, 10,000 a month for laundry, <laughs> 135,000, these are dollars, yeah? 135,000 dollars for clothes a month, guys. <laughs> Entertainment, 900,000 dollars, bro. Like, how many Girl Netflix accounts are you paying for? Hey, our, our guys how many are getting... Netflix accounts? Eh, 100,000 mortgage. Telephone, cell phone, and emails, $20,000. Fam, a month. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I feel like... Huh? Is she a small, medium enterprise? Does she own a business <laughs> somewhere? The way she's paying this people, Okay. Like, nah, like nice. honestly, I, to a level, I kind of, like get her her whole thing of like no i want this amount and and honestly i think they just put those figures down just so they can show of like this is why we want two million but not really that she's going to be spending all of that on that but also it depends on what happened because i'm like all they've stated is irreconcilable differences what are those irreconcilable differences you see because this sounds like a woman scorned you know and shakespeare said it Shakespeare said it, a woman scorned. Don't mess with that woman. Don't mess with that woman. So, 
all I'm saying is I feel like this this feels like this feels like they they actually had like issues and this is her trying to get at him of like yeah. yo okay that's how you did me so I'm gonna get you back and this is how yeah. I'm gonna get you so I think for me I feel like that's the way it's coming off cuz like some of those yeah. things it's like that's ridiculous dude like why are you asking for all of these things and and like okay and also the thing is nobody's saying what this prenup entails like yeah what was it like what's in there what's in it for yeah. her what made her sign in the first place you know mm-hmm. so it's like the all of that i feel like she's really just out to get him honestly because it doesn't yeah, no. make as much well, sense re- so she's out really to right, get him i think we could be here and saying that you know two million dollars a month is ridiculous while in her books you know it's, it's it's all good and apparently the law states that you know if you uh make you if you uh give this person a certain lifestyle and even after you divorce you're supposed to maintain that certain lifestyle for them so maybe clearly that's that's what's happened mm-hmm. and for her to maintain that certain lifestyle that's the amount that she Daddy. needs per month so fellas who are getting married <laughs> be careful to the certain lifestyles that you you have to you have this to love, oh, damn, this, I have this no one, this idea one this one <laughs> guys this guy made <laughs> close to a billion by selling his company i mean rightfully I she know. was there with him when when he was about to sell this company beats and stuff mm-hmm. Huh. But like he was. <sighs> Dali, you look sick already. It's not Dali, you. It's Dr. J. Dali doesn't know how he can talk. He doesn't know how he can talk. He doesn't know how he can talk. <laughs> okay, I think we lost. But I mean, for me now, I'd like to research of like what happens in Malawi. Like, do we have the same laws? Like. Um, when people get divorced, can a, yeah. can a you know Malawian wife say, "Hey, I'm going to request this amount, this amount in spousal support"? Like, do we have stuff like no. alimony that men have to pay in Guys, Malawi? Let's, let's find a lawyer, like I a wonder. marriage lawyer, to come through and tell us these things, since people are getting married like every mm. single weekend. Yo, what happens? What a phone call. We <laughs> went. <laughs> 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 We went to shoot something on on Saturday, so they were asking for the footage. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, Theo was oh, was wanted to know if we actually have the, 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 those type of laws here in Malawi, and I was saying that since we've got a lot of people that are getting married every single weekend, guys. At least the amount of weddings that I know that are happening almost every week mm. weekend six to eight weddings. I don't know about you, but I think it's. It's just a lot. So I think we should get a marriage counselor and just like, you know, inform us on the, on the ins and outs of marriages, you know, what happens. When marriage happens. law in Malawi. Yeah. So now I'm never about girls. You know, it's only quarter. And it's because nobody prepares for these things. Nobody prepares to get divorced with the person that they're getting married to, you know. Even 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 that like like this guy made close to 900 million dollars yeah if they didn't mm. if they had not signed that prenup she's she would probably get half of what he earned like half of his in that earning would go to him i'm not saying that's unfair i'm just saying it's a bit of pill to swallow you know what i'm saying like it's a it happened to Jeff Bezos as well where his wife got like i think he got 38 billion dollars or something like that you know and for him he's the richest man in the world i mean he doesn't really that to him doesn't hurt i'm i'm trying to think of how it would out affect me like if i was in that situation hey guys i don't know i'm not saying i love money more than i love a girl i'm just saying that my girl better understand that the way things were set up is that but also boys, maybe that's money. the thing that people Maybe that's the thing that people need to talk about now when they're getting married of like okay yeah. we're not saying we're getting married to get divorced but should that happen because you never know what's going to happen so should that happen how how are we going to split up this 
thing. Like, how, how are we going to do? Because people make all such things as joint accounts and yada, yada, yada. My money is your money type ish. If my money is your money, we're getting divorced. Give me the money then, you know? Mm. Uncle. Just say. Uh, how many people do you thing. think would be comfortable to be talking about that? Before I've marriage. actually spoken about it with my girlfriend. But like, that's I've the problem. About, I've spoken about yes, the prenup with my problem. girlfriend before. And mm-hmm. can you guys hear me? Yes. Like, I, yes, I brought it can. up. I'm like, it was because of this story even. And I brought it up to say, uh, babe, like, what if we signed a prenup? I was just trying to mess with her. And she caught feelings. And I could understand why. Because I wouldn't want the same. Like, I would not let her sign a prenup. I wouldn't sign a prenup. This video might be used in future against me. <laughs> Gotta be careful. I'm just saying, I wouldn't <laughs> sign a prenup because I don't take marriage lightly, you know? And so I'm not going in there with expectations of Mina Zaga Niga. You know, I'm going in there with expectation of saying, okay, we're doing this for real, for real. Mm. But if it so happens that in Guinea Alagua and we have to split, I guess I'd have to swallow the pill, like to say, all right, cool. We gotta do what we gotta do. Yeah. All right. How about you? But you? here's the thing. Them. I think I think there should be room to still. I think there'll be there needs to be room to have a discussion. I'm not saying I'm for prenups or not for prenups. All I'm saying is if I'm getting married today, I think my future husband and I should be able to have a discussion of this thing. Of like, we're not. I'm not saying we're going in to get divorced, but. I think we need to be prepared, like, you know, be able to hold each other accountable when yeah. whatever happens. And even if we're extremely mad at each other, so then it's not an issue of let me get you back. And so mm-hmm. I'm going to request this amount of money or whatever, but be able to have that conversation of, okay, we're going to hold each other accountable. And even, I mean, there's ways around a prenup that makes it um, where you can sign it to where it's, um, what you want call it? I wouldn't say equal, but I feel like it's not the right word. But like, you know, make it fair in a way for both parties of of like, okay, by the time that we get to this particular point, maybe both of us would have made more money. Maybe I'd have made more money than you. He would have made more money than me. But we should be able to have these conversations because then if we don't, we're going to get in trouble when finally we have, you know, frustrated each other somehow. And then it's like, oh, there's nowhere else to go but get divorced at this point. And then now you have to continue struggling because you've got issues about money. And I and think that's just two million that's just dollars right. every month. So it's yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you know, let's just that let's space, avoid guys. these things and have conversations. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that is sick already. <laughs> just hearing. Yeah, that. he's just like, ah, uh-uh, no. <laughs> All right, do we have more time for our last? Topic? I don't think we do. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, First of all, we let's have, talk about the new billionaire in town. We have three minutes to go, so we can do it quickly. All right. The new okay. billionaire in town, Tyler Perry, yo. Woo-hoo. Yo. Yes, from, from poor as hell to billionaire, as written by no, Forbes, guys. I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm yeah. A, I'm a big Tyler Perry fan. Um, by fan, I mean of his story. Uh, I actually. Do, oh, do not guys, his movies. No, 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 wait, no, don't, don't, don't get like I, I, I like some of his stuff, not everything. I, I realize really whenever I'm watching his stuff, I'm always nitpicking because of what other people say, and also because of like my knowledge and like production and stuff. So I'm always like looking at okay, now that, no, wait, that. There's this time he had done that whole thing about writing his own scripts and everything, and to me, I was like, ah, okay, cool. Wait then there's no diversity here. That's why the story always usually goes the way you want it to go. But as, as, as someone who wants to be a media mogul in this lifetime, I look up to him. Like I've seen his argument and how he's moved things. And mm. there's like a secret source he has that like just inspires me. So yeah, big up to him. I'll find him soon. I'll be yes. there soon and then later. <laughs> Yes, got it. I'll be right next to you, (laughs) Dali. Let's do that. All right. And also, I think from all of this, I just got to learn that, you know, it just doesn't take a year to make it, especially in this industry. 
takes a long time. There's a lot of patience, a lot of hard work, yeah. a lot of perseverance that comes with it all to finally get to a point where you're like, okay, I've made it, you know? And yeah, it's 50, hey? He's 51. He's 50. He started doing that stuff since he was in his 20s, so. In his 20s, wow. imagine. Oh. So. So I'm just going to say this on behalf of Tyler Perry. I feel like Tyler Perry will never come out and say this, but I'll just say everyone in Yard have been, you know, saying jokes about Tyler Perry because of his movies and whatnot. Jokes on you, suckers. Jokes on you, in your face. <laughs> I was expecting something in worse. Your like, jokes like, on you. I was expecting something worse. Like, how am I going to censor this now? How am I going to censor this? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but we no, like... No. <laughs> In quotes, in quotes, Tyler Perry, guys. Like, it's not us. <laughs> all right, uh, that's all we had for Because I know he's thinking it, but he, he's too nice to ever say it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so we're out of time, yeah? Yeah, bro. Uh, we have a minute left. Uh, I was having so much fun, oh. guys. All right, but anyway, you know, you know what they say about when you're having fun, time flies. But that's all we have for you today's episode of Opinionated. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys, and uh, give us your feedback on all the stuff that we talked about today. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and subscribe to Dots Alive on YouTube, and of course, comment as well. What's what's with follow that? me on my new Twitter page? <laughs> follow oh, yeah, that new Twitter page. <laughs> Follow Daddy on his Twitter page. All right. You've been with me, Cynthia, and... Yo. Daddy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right. Peace, guys. <laughs>